So today I'm going to discuss about understanding of Talam. Just the basic stuff, okay, the beginner stuff. So the first Talam that we will be, we are learning in Karnatic for almost a year is a Talam called Adi. Most people say Adi Talam, but there is no such Talam called Adi. As you know, if you are an intermediate student, you might have learned something called Saptatala Alankaram in which there is no talam called Adi Talam, right? So Adi is actually the nickname of particular talam called Chadrasra Jati Tripura Talam. For beginners, you know, like kids and beginners just to understand or it is easy to remember the talam. So it was shortened and maybe nicknamed to Adi. Adi means beginning or starting. So the talam that we learn in the starting or beginning is called Adi. It is actually an eight beat cycle which is counted as 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, right? So have you ever thought why we have to count 1, 2, 3, 4? Why not 1, 2 or 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, right? So there is a reason why. The reason being the Talam is called Chaturasra Jadi Tripura Talam. So usually in Carnatic music, whenever there is Jati, in front of a particular talam, we actually count it, beat and count. Tripura talam actually has three parts, which is beat, which is the first part, beat and turn, second part, again beat and turn, third part. Okay, we call it Lakhu, Drudam, Anudrudam. I'm not going to into the Sanskrit or technical detail of it. It will be complex for you. Just trying to keep it very minimal. Okay, so it is actually a beat, first part, beat and turn, second part. Beat and turn, third part. The Tripura Talam is actually considered of only five beats. Whenever we say Jati along with Tripura Talam, then we will have to count. So based on the Jati, let's say we have five Jatis, which is also called as Pancha Jatis. One is three, four, five, seven and nine. I'm not, again not going to the technical detail of it. We Three is Tisram, four is Chadrasram. So Chadrasram is the Jadi that we are talking about. So whenever I say Chadrasra Jadi Tripura Talam, the Chadrasra part, the four, count of four has to accompany with the first part of the Talam, which is along with the beat. So beat is considered as one, and then you have three more, three plus one is four. So you have to count up till to four. So one, two, three, four, then comes the second part. First part is completed, beat, and then counting is completed. That is the first part of Chadrasra Jadi Tripura Talam. If it is only Tripura Talam, it will be beaten. There won't be any count. Second part will be beat and turn. Third part will again be beat and turn. So whenever there is Chadrasra Jati, we count 1, 2, 3, 4. Then we will do beat, turn, beat, turn. This is the Talam part that we start learning, right? Now, coming to understanding Talam a little more better. So whenever a person is practicing, let it be vocal or violin, or any other instrument always start off in slowest speed possible i'll give you an example why so when we say tempo it's called beats per minute so if we consider 60 beats per minute there is a usual ticking of a clock one second it counts up to 60 and makes a minute right that's 60 beats per minute it's easy for us to you know, maybe calculate it in our head. One, two, three. That that's that's kind of you, when you when you look at the clock, you can count the ticking of a clock. Let's say I am taking two beats per minute. Can you keep track of it? Two beats per minute is one beat in thirty seconds. So, what I wanted to say is, the slower the tempo gets, our comprehension to understand that tempo or to maintain that tempo reduces so the slower you get you'll have to put in more effort to understand the tempo or to be in that tempo so whenever you play slower you are actually trying to make you comprehend to that particular tempo so the slower speed will actually get you a strong hold of talam 
or also called as tempo or rhythm whatever you want to name it you can you will get a strong hold of thalam only when you try playing slower i know many people run behind playing faster the key to playing faster is actually playing things slower understanding them in a slower tempo then building up the speed you can never jump double speeds just like that let's say you are in 60 beats per minute today you are practicing a piece immediately you cannot do 120 right it's actually gradually increasing 60 to 65 or maybe 70 75 80 85 maybe after a tempo you are maybe you cannot play even five extra you can only let's say 90 then 91 92 93 you have to increase your speed like that you can never do jump from one place to the double speed of that particular tempo right that is not that's not possible in most of the case or else you have to be exceptional yes is exceptionally skilled i can say so always try to play slower tempo practice slower tempo understand things in slower tempo how to practice and play in slower tempo then build up your speed another thing i have seen is people not using the full potential of the bow this is coming to violin right so whenever you are playing slow you have to practice playing from this step to the other there is no compromise in that i have seen people stopping it here you know playing from the bottom and then trying and stopping it here no i have also seen people who don't even touch this area they start from here which is absolutely strict no because this is the area that is more difficult to play the weight of your hand being on the violin will actually give you a nasty sound when you are a beginner so for that to go away you have to practice this area more instead of pressing and pushing it down or you know pulling it down what you need to do is control the bow with your hand keep the weight in your hand and then slowly slide so whenever you are playing something with this area this is something that you will hear when you are beginner sometimes what you have to do is just keep the weight in your the bo- weight of the bow in your hand and then practice that and make sure that you now use this area or the slow in the slowest speed why i am saying this is because if you don't use the slowest speed practice in the slowest speed and use the entire bow there will be times where you need to play a little extra using the bow like this like tahitim right let's say you have to play 10 to 12 notes in a bow that is where you will struggle to play if you don't use the entire bow if you want to play slower you have to use the entire length of the bow i've seen people teaching and also you know practicing only from maybe leaving this much out of the bow which is absolutely a no strictly no because if you want to play in proper tone this is the thing that you need to control first there are some exercises and stuff that you need to do western exercises actually i'll be coming up with another another video in the near future how to master the bow all right so start practicing slower always good to use metronome and shruti tanpura app or shruti box if you have one or a youtube video where shruti is being played you can use any of that metronome also you have to use you have to find a tempo which is comfortable to start off with but never stay in that tempo you need to keep changing your tempo whenever you are comfortable in playing in a particular tempo you shift it so that you get you get control of talam little more better so keep changing the tempo just a little shift it just plus 5 or minus 5 if you are comfortable let's say you are comfort, comfortable in 50 or 55 or 60 once you are okay playing in 60 change it to 62 or 65 or reduce it to 58 or 55 then practice on that that's how things are being done if you like the content of this video please like share and subscribe yeah support the channel thank you so much